Okay, so before I begin, I just want to congratulate John on getting number five on the bestsellers list. It's a great accomplishment, and we love you. Time for my video on Paper Towns. Um, I finally finished this on Monday. Um, I was only kind of reading it when I was on the bus, and on Monday when I had free time because my laptop died. Um, because I don't really have much time for reading half the time, so I don't get to read normally. This is actually my first John Green book. Um, I'd say it is amazing. Um, the only thing, I don't really like how it was in first person. I never really like first person books a lot. Um, which is kind of really annoying. Especially when it's in present tense. So I didn't really even notice it, either. Until I got to, like, part three. Oh, and from this point on, uh, chances there will be spoilers. So, if you don't want the thing to be spoiled for you, please do not watch. If you do, then you are weird and watch anyways, I guess. The book is about Quentin Jacobson and Margot Ross Spiegelman and Radar. Um, I don't even know if it mentions his full name, I can't remember. That's how stupid I am. Yay. And Radar has a house full of black Santas, which is like an ongoing joke in it. And there's Ben, can't remember his last name. I don't feel like looking in the book right now. Um, he has the tendency to call like all girls honey bunnies, and it's kind of creepy. <laughs> uh, he's like the person who's like most likely to be a perv when he's older. And then there is Lacey Pemberton who doesn't really get too involved in the story until, like, mid to late part two. But yeah, those are pretty much the main characters. The whole book is pretty much based on the concept of paper towns, and paper, for that matter. Um, paper, not really in the literal sense, but its actual meaning is kind of described in the way of paper. Um, but yeah, the whole book's kind of described in Paper Towns and how everything's fake. Like, when they were kids, uh, Quentin and Margot found a dead body of a guy named Roger. And then, after that, they sort of stopped talking, they didn't really be friends. And then, it's like, based like, eight years later. And this one night, she randomly comes into his room, just like, she's spying. Or, as John puts it in the description, <laughs> Like the summary thing that's around the back of the book, but it's also in the cover, if it's hardcover, that she's dressed like a ninja. Um, which was actually kind of amusing. So then she brings him along for like a night of like s sneaking around, breaking and entering and everything. And she's attempting to make him a badass. <laughs> um, it's actually really amusing, though it kind of takes up like a third of the book, so it's kind of weird. Um, then after this, she randomly disappears, and then we find out that she's disappeared a couple times, and every time she's left hints. Um, there are vague hints, and half the time they lead nowhere. And this time they all seem to be for Quentin. And so he tries to follow these things, and he spends like a month on him. And she didn't really intend for him to actually find her. She only intended him to go to like some mall thing that was like closed like years before and um and then he ends up stumbling across something she didn't want him to find and then he ends up finding her and then she kind of leaves and he doesn't go with her even though it turns out that she likes him too so yeah um that's a very quick rundown um pretty much the main plot. So, yeah, um, the concept of the paper towns and everything, uh, pretty much. Um, one of the interpretations of paper towns is, uh, unfinished pseudo visions. Oh my god. <laughs> Someone actually made an omnictionary dictionary page. Ha! Ah! This is amazing. Okay, so what I think they are is just, like, a whole bunch of houses, like it's a neighborhood kind of thing. And, yeah. So, Anyways, so uh, an unfinished one is obviously ones that haven't finished being built and aren't developed and have human uh, habilitation. Um, and it's one of the many 
way, uh, interpretations of Paper Towns. Um, another is on maps to stop copyright from happening. They add uh, random towns on it that actually don't exist. And then if they see that town on another map, then they know that they copied the map off of them. And the one that's mentioned in this book is Algo, and it's in New York. And someone actually eventually ended up building a store on the on an intersection where Algo is supposed to be. So Algo actually is a, existed on the map. It actually isn't right now anymore. Um, I don't know what happened. And then it goes into how like everything's paper, including the houses, the people. Um, and it's sort of saying that like people can be bent, fo uh, folded into like whatever everyone else wants and everything. Um, I don't fully understand it though. I find it really interesting, so I want to try and find out more. Actually, um, so yeah, the book kind of goes on like that. Um, a lot of the time, it's Quentin wondering about Margot, like how he notices that he never really knew her, and that by her doing this, he's actually finding out more about her and everything. But yeah, all in all, I think the book's actually really good. I actually don't know of an author that actually like loosely uses like fuck shit everything like in their writing like all the time it's like amazing the question to everyone who's watching this if anyone even does um what cover do you like best sad margo or happy margo i actually like happy margo but the chapters here that's the canadian equivalent of barnes and nobles and whatever um they only had this one and it was kind of evil because like i want Happy Margo, but there is no Happy Margo, so what the hell? <sighs> I want Happy Margo. So apparently I fail when it comes to like reviewing books. So yeah. Comments and suggestions down there. So anyways, buy Paper Towns if you haven't already. Because <clears throat> it's a really good book. And yeah. <gasps> Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm.